Everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor. Today we're doing a coaching session for Recon Support. It's a special thanks to Crowbar from the chat. Really appreciate the donation. If you'd like a coaching session yourself, you can email me at thestrategyprofessor at gmail.com. I'm happy to set that up for you. It's just $25. You can do it on stream or off stream. It's like Jax was tabbed or something there. You can do it on stream or off stream. Uh, I'll also have a link in the description to my coaching playlist. So if you want to watch more coaching sessions, just kind of learn about it. That's always available for free anytime on the channel. So you can learn from other people who have donated as well. So be sure to check that out. And if you do enjoy the content on the channel, come by, stop by the stream sometime if you'd like. Starts around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time most nights. Uh, we do tier list every patch for support and AD carry. And sometimes I do some other positions as well. Uh, we have topical guides like best one tricks, um, how to micro better, how to macro better, and a lot of other stuff. And we also have champion guides. I just recently did a Yumi guide for support and a Lux guide for support. And I'm constantly adding in more of that. So be sure to check that out um, as well. And like and subscribe. If you enjoy the content, it's free, it's easy, just takes a couple of clicks, helps out a ton. And if you want to help support the channel, uh, YouTube just added a join button on there. Uh, it's just $5 a month, like a Twitch sub. Uh, it's less than a quarter a day. If you really, you know, like the channel, you have a couple dollars to spare. You're welcome to come out and play with us every Sunday for viewers night if you want to support also. And you get $5 off of any coaching or any guides that you might want to commission um, if you sign up for the membership as well. But anyways, okay, let's get in here. Now I did my little spiel or working on our level ones. Okay, not bad. Um, it's basically traded at night's. I guess Jen got rid of his heal, which, okay, that part's not, not as great, but it's all right. 70 pandas. So yeah, you want to be a little careful about, um, obviously Alistar, when he hits level two and level three are pretty big spikes for Alistar. I'm not sure about the rank on this. What is the rank, Crowbar? I am streaming this as well, so you might hear me um, talking to the chat. Bronze. Okay. It's Volibear, 8 um, jungle. Okay, so you want to be a little careful here when Scuttle's coming up. This is a pretty, like pivotal moment like where you're going to get ganked if you don't get ganked right away at like level one or level two usually you'll get ganked after scuttle so i'll typically try to save a ward for scuttle and if you can like right here push up and go try to take the scuttle especially if your jungler is not getting it like right there when he pushes that you should rotate over here and see if you can get this scuttle usually if if it's pushed in you can get the scuttle and then rotate back before the wave crashes. Scuttle, fun fact, Scuttle is actually worth about a minion wave worth of um, gold. I don't know the exact experience calculations, but it's worth a lot. And it heals and gives like gives half your mana and half your health. It's really OP. So you should try to go fight for that Scuttle if you can get lane pressure. Especially like in in bronze people aren't gonna respect it at all like they're not gonna come fight you for scuttle They're not even gonna be paying attention. See here. We go. It's what I was talking about. So he just probably did scuttle and now he's down here to gank so If you don't go do the scuttle you have to at least be aware that there's likely to be a gank If you don't see the jungler topside and especially if your jungler is like doing scuttle up here and You still haven't seen their jungler. There's a really high chance. He's gonna be bot side Yeah, it's. It, I don't remember the exact gold calculations, but it's worth a lot. It's worth, I think, most jungle camps in terms of value. The scuttle early. So it's like 100 and... Maybe not 140 gold super early, but it's worth a lot. Like, it's not going to be worth, like, a cannon minion wave, but if it's not a cannon minion wave, I'm pretty sure it's... It's either the same or it's at least very close. Oh. That was a rough catch there. Okay, Alistar's going to end. No, dude! All he had to do is keep running. Now I start would have died. Hey, thanks, Basil. Ha. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Um. So yeah, definitely like try to try to push and like go fight for the scuttle at least. It's like it it'll take you a little bit to get it. You know, it'll probably take you if you don't have a champion that has like a stun to um 
Jin can uh, stun it with his W, I believe. Um, but that does extra damage to it. So if you have a champion that has like a stun or something, you can take it really quickly. If you have like a um, like Nautilus, does it pretty quickly, or um, like Tom Kinch does it super fast, but he's not a popular support. But either way, like you know, it'll take you maybe 20, 30 seconds to round it up and kill it. But if they're pushing a tower, you should still be able to catch most of your minion wave by the time you get back. Yeah, so you might lose a couple, but another, like I said, another powerful benefit is it heals so much. Like, it'll give you, it'll give your AD carry back, like, half their health and half their mana bar. It's, it's super useful. It also gives you a little mini ward there, which can see, you know, if the jungler is running up and down the river. So, it's very, very nice. It's been nerfed, too. It used to be even more powerful. They've nerfed it, like, two or three times. There's a reason that, like, challengers freak out about Scuttle most of the time. Like I said, it doesn't influence games as much in, uh, you know, like in Bronze, Gold. Even in Platinum, people don't really go for the Scuttle. Like, I have to tell them all the time to do it. Even in Low Diamond, they don't do it. But it's very free. Okay, what, now what are you leveling up? Uh, you want to level up your Q in lane. Um, I've tried leveling up W and E. I've tried almost everything. Oh, see if you can E out. Okay, nice. It's close. Um, yeah, you got to watch that Alistar under tower. He's really dangerous. Especially with Zaya, because if you get knocked up, Zaya's probably going to be able to root you also. All she has to do is Q and then auto attack once, and she can root you. Um, yeah, the main reason you want to level up your Q is that it costs the same amount of mana at all levels that's the biggest reason and that's something that i didn't respect for a really long time but like if you start leveling up your w it does do a bit more damage your q does similar damage um but it costs a lot more mana it's like 10 more mana each time and until you get your zeeks you can actually run out of mana pretty quickly as recon um in the landing phase so that's the main reason to get at least three points in q it's like you do extra damage it does lower the cooldown but mostly it's just very efficient because it doesn't cost a lot of mana Yeah, I would get at least three points of Q in lane, and then after that, you can figure it out. I like doing the shield more because um, it just gives you, like, it's shorter cooldown and a bigger shield. And shield is just so useful later on, especially if you're going to get something like a redemption. You're going to get some plus healing and shielding somewhere in your build. Um, it's really nice. W is okay. Uh, it just basically it increases the damage and lowers the cooldown. Um I just don't think it scales as well as the uh, the shield, though, but it kind of depends on the matchup. But lately, I've been doing at least three points of Q and then um, maxing shield. Okay. Um, good. Okay, you got out. It's a perk of Rakan. Yeah, good job. Yeah, you just got to hang out. Someone needs to be there for the experience and the gold, even though you probably have some money, right? Yeah, you have enough. Yeah, you have a lot of money, actually. You need to back pretty soon, but you never want to leave the tower unattended. Even if it's hard to last hit a lot. Um, you at least want the experience. Yeah, you need to ping them back. Okay, and he just, he just died. Yeah. If you see your jungler invading, you need to ping him back a lot faster. In general, like, don't be afraid to communicate, like, um, useful information, right, with ping. So, like, ping your jungler back and then just, like, type something like, we're back or um, can't help or something like that. Because a lot of times, you know, junglers will try to invade and they don't, like, look at the lanes first and they don't understand that, like, just simple geometry, like, their team is going to get there faster because it's their jungle. Unless you have them pushed into tower. Nah, I would have just run out of that. Okay, let me look at this again here real quick. Yeah, you're, you're stepping up too close to try to get the Qs on the Zaya. Just hit the Alistar if you can with the Qs. It doesn't do much to him, but... Um, it does help you charge up your Frostfang a bit faster, but... Yeah, you really got to respect the Feathers and the Alistar. Like, it's a lot of CC, and Rakan obviously dies really quickly if he gets CC'd. So, you know, just stay max range. 
Whoever's closest that you can throw a Q at, just throw the Q at him. It's probably going to be Alistar. Yes, it's not going to hurt him, but... At least you'll be charging up your um, Spell Thieves. You will learn like yeah, I know it's hard to watch everything on the map, but just try to get used to just looking over at that mini-map, you know, at least once every five seconds or something. Think of it as kind of like driving, right? Like, you want to be looking in your rearview mirror if you're on the interstate and you're trying to switch lanes and stuff, right? So, sometimes it's hard. You got a bunch of stuff going on in front of you, but if you don't want to wreck, you've also got to, like, look in the mirrors occasionally, too. It's kind of the same thing bot lane. Like, you need to see sort of what else is going on around you. I know it's tricky. It's like... I don't know. It's it's a tough balance. But yeah, if you see, like, just try to look at the minimap more if you can. And if you see something going on um, that looks like it's a bad idea, try to ping people. If you ever see the jungler, ping the jungler. But if someone on your team's doing something silly, like, you know, do the best that you can to let them know. Like, obviously in a polite way. Just, like, ping back and say, can't help, can't help. And then, like, ping the portrait for their for Alistar or something, so they understand what you're talking about, that Alistar's coming. Yeah, so, I, I know it's a, it's a lot to process, but it's just something to just try to start thinking about. Like, a lot of League is honestly just, like, information processing. Like, that's what so much of League is, is it's like, how much information can you take in and interpret on the map um, and make good decisions based on that information. Like, that's a lot of what League is. And so it's just getting used to, like, having your mind do all these multitasking, get all of these, like, you know, sort of just... <clears throat> and you can do it. You just have to build a routine for it. Just kind of timers in your mind. Just saying, okay, Dragon's going to be up here. We need to push and try to go contest it. Or, okay, their flash is down. We got five minutes to try to make a play. Or, like, we just saw their jungler topside, so we can do something aggressive bot side. But yeah, it starts with just getting, trying to get comfortable with looking at the minimap about as often as you would, you know, in a busy interstate or something, look in your mirrors. And tab button, too. Like, be sure to tab... And when you're looking at tab, um, you know, just try to look for important things. Like, try to learn what you should be looking for. So, like, number one is look at, like, your AD carries items versus their AD carries items. So, like, right now, for example, they have a BF sword and you only have a pickaxe. This Berserker's Greaves really doesn't do that much early. So, they're ahead of you. Which means it's going to be hard to fight them. Because they're going to do a lot more damage. So, you really don't want to fight them right now. So at the end of the day, what matters in terms of, like, if you win a fight or not is your items. So your AD carry could actually be up in gold. They could actually have some kills, but if they buy silly items, um, or if they haven't backed, and they just are sitting on a bunch of gold, then you're going to lose the fight <laughs> if they have better items, unless you severely outplay them. Hey, Sammy. Oh, you can get your sleep. I did one coaching in a previous stream. I was gonna, I can do the other one for you either tonight or if you're tired, I can do it off stream and definitely post it up before stream tomorrow night. Sorry, it's taken me a couple of days on that one. But yeah, whatever you want to do. Um, but I, I'll email it to you when I finish it. I'll email you the link and I'll put it in the playlist. I wasn't sure if you were still here or not, so I was like, okay, I'll just do Sammy's tomorrow and we'll do um, Crowbars because I know he was here tonight. Okay, nice. Good roam. Uh, well, y'all are going to get roamed on, though. <laughs> Good idea, but... Ooh. Okay. Yeah, Jax again is trying to invade. Um, it might be a good idea. Like, you don't want to be too forceful when you say stuff to people, but... Like, maybe say, um, hey, let us get priority first, and we can come help you on those invades or something. Or you could even, like, you could even try to take the fault for it, even though it's not your fault. Just say, hey, sorry, we haven't been there for those roams. Let us try to get priority in our lane first, and then we'll come help you. 
say sorry on roams let us push first we help you know something like that in chat you don't ever really want to type more than like five or six words max in a single line in chat because no one's going to read more than that but in general like yeah volley did live but y'all used a lot of summoners they, oh yeah the vola bear lived but jacks died um Damn, they are crushing y'all too. You need to keep like keep an eye on the top score too. So, you know, it's also a good idea to press tab and to look and see like how's everyone else doing on the map, you know? So like for example, the um the LeBlanc is super fed right now. So you don't want to be caught off guard by that and just have her one shot you. So you might be thinking to yourself, and in this game, I probably wouldn't go Ionians. I would probably go um Probably Mercury Treads, because I think the biggest threat to kill you later is the LeBlanc. She's going to one-shot you. You can probably dodge other people. That'll also help a little bit with the CC if you happen to get rooted or something by the Zaya. Maybe you live. I would come down bottom. Like, they're still in this lane. Like, this lane's still going on, so I would probably try to stay with the Jin. Jin is actually the closest to making a play. Like, I think you have the most kill threat bot than anywhere else. Like... Heimer does have pretty good farm, but you're probably not going to kill the LeBlanc with Heimer. He's also going a really low damage build with Tyr. Now, he's about to get flanked by Urgot right here. I don't think you're... Like, you're not going to kill LeBlanc. I don't think... I mean, maybe. But, yeah, get out. Now you're kind of trapped. Okay. I mean, that was cool. You got out there, but... Um, you know, you had to use your ult for it. You want to use your ult to try to, like, make proactive plays that can get kills. So, just think about, like, LeBlanc here. It's a really low percentage chance you're going to kill her because she has so many jumps on a low cooldown. Like, your highest probability to get a kill is probably bot lane. It's still pretty hard to kill Zaya, but she's only got two kills versus, like, everyone else has four. So, like, there are some matchups where Ionian boots can be good. I think I got them in my last game. But, really, it's, like, if you're pretty far ahead. <clears throat> but a lot of the time, like, you need defensive boots because Rakan's really squishy. And if you take a defensive boot, that'll open you up to be able to take something like um, Redemption as your second big item. Which is really, really strong in team fights. But if you try to go Redemption and Ionians, you're just too squishy. Okay, nice. Good move. So you're probably going to have to go um, Knight's Vow second. A lot of people go Defensive Boot and Knight's Vow. So they'll either go Ninja Tabby and Mercury Treads and Knight's Vow and Zeke's. So that you can confidently go in, start a fight, and not die immediately. Well, you're not doing anything bot, yeah, but you're also not really doing a ton middle. Like, you're dancing around. I guess you're, like, buying Heimer some space, so... That's something. Like, you're keeping him off a of Heimer, letting him farm. Um, okay, nice. Okay, Jack's got a kill. Yeah, try to play around. The, oh, if he didn't do that, you might be able to get him here. Be careful. Don't get flipped in a tower. Yeah, Jack's... Okay, so one thing to keep in mind here is, like, ping a lot when you when you want to go in and fight, just so they're paying attention. This Jax, especially like in Bronze, a lot of people are probably just like really looking at their screen. Like they're not thinking about what other people are doing very well. They're, they're just trying to like make sure that they, you know, take care of what's going on right in front of them. So Jax probably didn't even see you coming. Like he probably was just CSing here. So you got to ping a lot for him. If you ping, then they'll know. So just try to like communicate and help them make good decisions. Um... Yeah, th I mean, there are some spaces where, like, roaming can work, but... Like, Jin was kind of close in CS at some point. But he's falling behind now. Because he can't really farm. And they're going to get this tower for free, basically. So it's like, if you roam, that's okay. But you have to, like... You have to do something with the numbers advantage. You know, on the map. Because you've had... They've had two people bottom, and you've only had one person bottom. So you've had an extra person on the map the entire time. Okay, that was a good knock-up. Um, so you have to really take advantage of having those numbers. I think you did get top lane and 
maybe mid lane off of that. So maybe it was worth. I mean, it's a tough call because, I mean, you're right. You really weren't, like, doing a lot bot lane. It's tough to say. I feel like you should probably stay bot unless your AD carry is just, like, really hard chain feeding. Like, you should probably stay until the towers break and just try to get your jungler to come down or something. They should turn around and go for Alistar. He's going to die, though. I mean, this this is a tough one, you know, because, like, everybody's losing really hard. So, it's it's hard to figure out who to play around. I think probably Jax is probably your best bet. So, see if you can make some plays with Jax just because he scales so hard. I mean, Nasus maybe, but Nasus is pretty far behind. I feel like Jax is probably your strongest win condition right now. Okay, now watch out because Alistar might flank you right here. You need to try to ward this if you can. Okay, he just ran. That's very common. A lot of Alistars, because they have their ult, they're basically... In no, 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 no. You, I I don't, I don't think it's worth, like, maybe you stalled the tower, maybe, maybe you stalled the tower there, but, like, your ult's really important, like, that's one of the only ways your team's gonna win a team fight, is if you get a really nice ult, and, like, Jax gets, like, a triple stun or something. Okay. Okay, nice. Okay, just stall, just stall. Keep running. Jax is pushing bot. Uh, may maybe Gnosis with the cleanup? Maybe. Oh, nice. He's got Rift down there, too. All right, all right. This is your ticket. Y'all can get back in here. Don't get flipped. Don't get flipped. Don't get flipped. Yeah, you gotta watch those Zaya feathers. A good trick about Zaya is if she's attacking you and you're trying to get away, like, step to the side of her. Like, you always want to strafe her. So that she can't get feathers to pull you back. It's kind of weird movement, but like instead of trying to run straight back after that, um, try to run diagonally at least, and then e back to people if you can. I know sometimes when all that stuff's going on, it gets really hard to do that, but. Hey, that's all good, man. Hey, nobody's good at that stuff in bronze. <laughs> like, even in platinum, people are not good at, like, following pings, all that kind of stuff. But it's just, that that's why I try to focus on that a lot in coaching sessions, because if you're aware of it, you can do it. Like, it doesn't take any mechanical skill. All it takes is just, like, just knowing what to focus on a little bit and just taking, you know, small steps at a time towards just expanding your awareness of what's going on and then communicating that with your team so that they can make good decisions too. Because a lot of people, like, you know, I know the meme is like, everyone doesn't know what's going on in solo queue and no one listens. It's like, but they will, like, not always, but if you consistently make, like, offer good information for them, they will listen, at least some of the time. And some of the time is better than none of the time. So it's like, yeah, not everyone's gonna listen if you tell them, if you tell the jungler, hey, let us get pressure before you invade, but some of them will. So even if only half your junglers listen to you, when you say, hey, let us get pressure before we invade, we'll help you out, that's still, like, that can give you an extra percentage or two wins, right? And that adds up. You know, there's a big difference between winning 50% of your games and winning 51 or 52 in the long run, but... Okay, what do you got here? Okay, probably go in Knight's Vow next. I mean, that is good. Yeah, you are hitting a lot of good binds. You know, the only thing mechanically, like you said, that um, keeps getting you is the uh, the Zaya Feathers. It's hard to avoid that sometimes, but just walk into the side a little bit can help out some. Yeah, most of it, and that's the thing with most people is, like I said, if they just work on the decision-making a little bit and just communicate. I mean, there are some people that even, like, know what to do. Like, a lot of times, like, they don't get caught out. They don't die. You know, they have a good KDA. But their team keeps getting caught out. Their team keeps dying. 
and it's like because they're not pinging or communicating stuff it's like you, you just have to take responsibility for everything in the game as much as possible even if it's not your fault just what could you influence you know it's not just what did you do personally what could you have changed hmm That's where Mercury Treads would have come in right there. Um, I think you may have lived if you had Mercs instead of uh, Ionians. Maybe. I, I don't know. LeBlanc is really fed, but let me see this. Now, one thing I will say around these towers, I think you're trying too hard to defend some of these towers that are like pretty much indefensible. Um, you know, like using your ult plus R to stall a tower, it's questionable. Like sometimes, maybe maybe if like your side lanes are applying a lot of pressure and you think that stalling them out for that extra like 10 seconds or so might be worth it but a lot of times you're using a very important cooldown your ultimate and you're risking dying you've gotten out a lot of the time but um you know if they kill you and they get this tower they might go barren so and then like that that can be really rough because then if they try to go barren then maybe Jax goes in to try to steal it, and he ints and dies, and then it can just cause this chain reaction of bad stuff to happen. So you might just have to like just give up some of these towers faster and not risk dying, because if you die, it could be really bad. So let's see. We did win the promos. Okay, so I would have jumped to Heimer immediately there. Okay, so you just kind of got caught. I would either E to Heimer or W away right there. Once Volley starts running, you got to just get out of there. We did win the promos. Yeah, we're back in D4. Um... She's gonna kill you real quick. Nah, y'all aren't gonna get him. Just just go get dragon. Just go get dragon. Or way over chasing like they are very very strong right now they're 7 and 31 so once you pushed him past mid lane i would have just rotated and maybe try to get the dragon and if they show up at dragon just leave but like maybe they let you get dragon maybe they're not paying attention Yeah, it is kind of nutty just how, like, how much more efficient we could all play, you know, if we're, like, paying attention to macro and to the decisions and stuff. Even, But, like, even just getting a, like, a small portion of these things that I'm talking about, like, over time will win you a lot of games. It'll just feel, and sometimes you won't even think about it. But, like, once you get used to doing this stuff and it kind of becomes second nature, like, doing some of this macro, games will just feel easier. Like, I've had people that have done some coaching sessions, and it just all of a sudden just snap, you know, just clicks for them, I should say. Um, and then all of a sudden, they're like, wow, I'm just, like, whipping through, like, all these different divisions. It, did the game get easier? Like, is the ELO system different this year? I'm like, no, you're just better. <laughs> like, you're just doing all these macro things that you just didn't think about in the past. And it's kind of become second nature. I didn't think about all this stuff. I mean, back in Season 3 when I almost got to Diamond, I got to Platinum 1, I didn't even think of, like, probably a quarter of the stuff that I think about today. And I still am not processing everything. Like, there's way more that I'm not even, like, either aware of or that I just don't even, like, take into account as much, even when I play. Like, pro-level players, there's just, like, probably twice or three times as many things constantly going on. 
Um, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, there's so much that, like, pretty much everybody could be doing in their games a lot better to improve their chances to win, but they just don't realize it or they don't understand, like, how important it is. Okay, that was good. Force to get out of there now. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Mm. I think you're being a little greedy with the ults. I do that too sometimes as Rakan, but I think that forcing her to ult was good. But then you got to get out of there immediately after there. So, like, when you... Uh, let me just pull this back. Almost near the end here. Um, so, like, first of all, before you're going to do any kind of fight, you need to look at where people are on the map. So, like, Jin and Jax are bot lane. Jax has to clear this wave. So, fighting here, like, at all is a bad idea. Because it's going to be 3v5, and they're up a ton of gold. So, that's step one. It's like, okay, this is bad. We shouldn't fight this. Um, now, Alistar is looking for a fight because they see Jax bot lane. So, they know he's there. So, he gets a knock up. So, it's kind of a bad situation here. Zaya's already got several feathers set up. So... Okay, now after you finish this, like, after you get that out of her, you need to step to the side. Like, step over here. Because she's got all these feathers down here now. Just step over here and then E to the Gnosis to get out. But instead, you try to go back in and tag all of them. Now, even in, like, the best case scenario, let's say you hit them all. Like, what's that really going to do? Th these guys are not going to win this fight. So, like, you're going to charm them for, like, maybe one or two more seconds. And then maybe you get out, maybe. But, like, you know, it's not going to change the outcome. So if you just, like, ran back over here and got to Nasus, they're already out, too. Like, you're not stalling for them anymore. They could walk away right now. Um, so it's like you don't need to hit that to get them out. You could have just, you know, W'd right there to try to knock her up. You got her ult, which is good, but then you just sidestep it and either ult and run away or just E to him and save your ult. But yeah, I do that too much too, where I'm just like, I try to tag too many people with Rakan's ult, and then I get, um. Then I get caught out. I think you could have lived. I mean, it's totally reasonable, and what I would probably recommend there is if you get knocked up like that, and so does Heimer, just run. Just like W over this wall and just get out of there. Like, don't even try to peel for them, they're dead. That's what I would say. Like, one of the big things that's, like, so hard to do is just letting your allies die if they get caught out doing something silly. Well, if you think you're dead anyways, then, like, don't use your ult, you know? Like, just accept your death. But I'm pretty, like, you definitely could have lived. When they knocked you up here, you could have W'd over the wall and gotten away. But if you're trying to stall for your allies, I think that if you W'd there, you could have at least tried to run this way. Maybe Zaya just crits you twice and you die, but... Yeah, but even getting them to chase longer is not really going to do that much for you. I think just... Because you're not, like... Your team's not doing anything useful on the map at that point. They're just clearing, like, bot waves. So, like, buying time isn't really going to matter that much. I mean, I guess it does allow for your inhibitor to come back a little bit. Sadie, quit going up like that. Hey, what's up, Sammy? Uh, let me see how the viewers look here in a little bit. We're not going to be coaching all night. I'm just doing this one coaching session. We could maybe do one more. I kind of need to go to sleep here soon, but, um, we could maybe do one more here in just a minute. Um... Yeah, so what I would be doing right now, let's see, you can't really contest this dragon. Okay, Jin's probably dead. Yeah. Uh, Bali's gonna run him down. Um, Jax probably should keep splitting, honestly. Because they're all bottom, and you're not gonna be able to defend this inhibitor. They might even go for dragon. Okay, they actually went to go chase him. 
So like what I would try to do here, if you can, is see if you can just like put down some wards in their jungle if the lane's pushed up. It's tough to say, but just see like how deep you can get some wards and try to help Jax in the side lane because like maybe he has a lot of items. Maybe he can split push. He can probably beat anyone one-on-one -on -one split push unless LeBlanc blows him up instantly. Um, this is almost over too, Sammy, I think. So I should know here in just a minute. Okay. Well, they're pretty much wasting their Baron, so I think your best bet is probably, yeah, Jax just split pushes, and then... Oh, he got Cleaver and Trinity. Oh, it's so bad, because you're wasting Phage. Okay, so y'all do not want to fight. Like, just try to peel. Don't fight. You need to be pinging people back. I mean, maybe you can pick off the Alistar. I guess, yeah, there's like three people going for Jax. Okay. Okay, yeah, we'll definitely fight then. Uh, see if you can go get tier two bottom after this. Hey, oh, you could have got, grabbed the uh, Vala Bear there. Yeah, Jax is kind of hard carry in here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, y'all got three dead. I mean, timers are long. Yeah, keep pushing, keep pushing. I would have stayed here and pushed with these guys, but maybe it is correct to play around the jacks up here. Just put pressure on towers. Gnosis is like farming rates while three people are dead for 40 seconds. Be careful. She can crit you and, yeah, you're just, <laughs> you're dead. Yeah, you got to respect her. She's got a lot of items. Um, Yeah, y'all had a chance. I probably would have just stayed with these guys because you want to force them like, because it requires at least two people to kill the Jacks right now. So you want to force them to send two people at Jax. Which means you guys should have a numbers advantage mid lane. So yeah, I would not, under most circumstances, I would not try to go to where the split pusher is. Unless they can't 1v1. If they can't 1v1, then you might have to go up there to try to help them. But... Y'all did get bot tower too, which is good. So yeah, what needs to happen is y'all just need to stall out, uh, let Jax go in a side lane, and try to get vision for him, whichever side he's on. So wait and see where he's going, and then see if you can get some deep wards for him. Gnosis is wasting TP. Okay, hopefully they're not here or have wards. Mm, yeah, this... Well, y'all can kill him middle. It's just him. Probably. No, don't walk back in. If he ults you, it's a problem. Yeah, y'all didn't have Dinger, and major issue is that everybody's mid lane. Like, Jax needs to be in a side lane, not mid lane. Yeah, that gentle really doesn't do any damage right now. Okay. Yeah, you had a moment there. I think if you had, um, if you'd stayed with your team and pushed middle, maybe you could have gotten an inhibitor installed. It was going to be really hard, but like, you were starting to get a chance with like, Jax in side lane. Okay, so biggest stuff, um, you know, try to shot call for your team. I think the big thing is stay with your AD carry bot lane unless they're just, like, impossibly far behind. Maybe if it's an Ezreal bot lane, you can leave because Ezreal, in theory, should be able to farm. But you have to do something, like, immediately proactive and have, like, a huge impact if you're going to leave, like, a 1v2 bot lane. So you have an extra, a whole extra person that can walk around the map and do stuff to try to make plays, ward the enemy jungle, all that stuff get rift like get all these advantages so there are some times when abandoning your ad carry and you know could come up with some good benefits but i think there were a lot of times where you were just kind of sitting there just like holding a lane you know with heimerdinger or just like waiting around in bushes maybe making a play where it's gonna be really hard to get leblanc because she has so many jumps you did get a couple of things like top side you maybe if Jax was paying attention more you could have gotten that kill on volibear you did end up getting top tower anyway so 
you did get some stuff, but they ended up getting your bot tower, and I think they got at least one kill on Jin, and they were up 30 CS, so... I think that they basically broke even, maybe did a bit better um, with what you were doing on the map, so... I really wouldn't leave the lane unless their support leaves. If there's Usually, like, if you're not sure what to do, just match their support. Like, if their support's hanging out middle, you go hang out middle. If their support's roaming top, you go roam top. Um, so if you're not sure, like, what the proactive play is, like, what you should be doing, just match their support. So if their support's still sitting bot lane, most of the time you should probably still be sitting bot lane. You know, an occasional just drop by middle, see if you can get a play when your ult's up, maybe give them a ward or two, but then come back down to bottom. Roaming in general as a support is extremely dangerous, especially in bronze, because a lot of AD carries just don't know what to do, and they'll just die. Now, Jen actually did a good job of not dying while you weren't there, especially against something like Alistar. Um, but that, I think, was a, it was a tough decision there. Like, you're right, y'all probably didn't have a lot of kill pressure, but the thing is, you were kind of holding them even, sort of. Jen was at least staying in the ballpark of CS, and they weren't really getting a lot of damage on your tower, so... I don't know. It, it was a tough call, but I think in general, maybe staying down there a little bit longer and just trying to get Jax to come help you out would have helped. Or at least stalling it out, you know, just allowing Jax and Gnosis to farm a little bit more before that bot tower goes down. Because once the bot tower goes down, then Sivir and Alistar were able to go roam around freely, and you do not want Alistar roaming around freely. Um, and really, y'all weren't ready for team fights. Like, y'all are so far behind that you don't want, like, Zaya showing up to team fights either, so... It was a tough situation because every lane was losing, um, but I probably would have stayed bottom. Um, as far as like the mechanics that we mentioned before, you got caught a lot by being pushed up a bit too far and then Zaya was hitting you with feathers. So you just gotta always respect the threat on the enemy team. You know, with Zaya, it's the, or with that lane bot, you gotta stay out of Alistar's headbutt range and um, you gotta stay out of Zaya's feather range as much as possible. You gotta just look at the ground a little bit um, you know, and if you do get caught up, like, going in for a W and she ults, you need to immediately run to the side while she's in the air, perpendicular to her. So just, like, run straight to the side so she can't get you with the feathers on the blowback. Because a lot of Zayas, as soon as they ult, they're going to do their root caller right when they land to try to stun you. Now, really good ones will probably, if you try to run to the side, they'll probably use the root caller and then flash over next to you to get the stun anyways, but I don't think I'll be doing a lot of that in bronze. Um, so just try to run to the side and then E back out to your team. So, And finally, I guess the, the final thing I'll throw on there is, um, you know, sometimes you just have to let towers go, right? Like, use your ult and your W. There's, like, four people on the tower. You're trying to defend it by yourself. Like, maybe you stalled it out a couple of times for a few extra seconds. But I'd say, like, probably half the time maybe you got killed or you at least had to blow a lot of summoners in your ult. So sometimes, you know, sometimes it's good to do that. Like, if your team has side lane pressure, like if Jax is on the side, you can just stall him out for one more wave and just give Jax another 30 seconds of alone time with that side lane. Yeah, maybe that's worth it, but a lot of the time when you're trying to defend the tower, there's people just, like, hanging out in base, just, like, AFK farming the jungle and stuff like that. And what ended up happening is you would die and they would get the tower anyways. So it's kind of tough to learn when you should and shouldn't do that. But usually if you're alone near a tower and there's, like, at least three people there... Uh, unless you're a support that has extremely good wave clear, like maybe Zaya or Lux, you need to just get that tower up. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be it. Um, thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, um, well, hopefully you did, Crow. It sounds like you did. Anyone else out there, if you did, be sure to, um, you know, you can email me at thestrategyprofessor@gmail.com to set up a coaching session yourself. Check out some rest some of the rest of the coaching sessions in the playlist if you want leave a like and subscribe that helps out a ton if you want to support the channel with just a few dollars a month um then consider using the join button there you get a discount on any coaching you can come play with us on sundays it's a lot of fun um stop by the stream around 9 30 p.m eastern standard time most nights otherwise have a great day and we'll see you next time